But let's talk more about the violence in Israel and the Gaza Strip. We're joined by Human Rights Watch's Israel and Palestine Director Omar Shakir. Omar, very good evening to you. A pleasure to have you on Newsroom Africa tonight. So uh, as we sit here tonight, you've got the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu having vowed to punish his country's enemy, as he says, in a way that will echo for decades. Hamas is saying it will execute an Israeli hostage for every Palestinian strike that comes without warning. How concerned are you about what's going to unfold in the coming hours and the coming days? I could not be more concerned. I mean, these are, these are calls to commit odious war crimes. These are statements laced with intent to commit grave crimes. I mean, let's talk about both sides of this. I think when it comes to um, Hamas, it's very clear that, uh, you know, uh, deliberately targeting civilians Holding hostages are war crimes. I mean, international law is quite clear on these points. Nothing can justify those kinds of violations. Executing hostages would be another uh, flagrant violation of international law. Um, in terms of the Israeli side, we're already seeing Gaza undergoing severe bombardment, uh, residential buildings that are being knocked to the ground, entire families being wiped off. Human Rights Watch has documented unlawful airstrikes over years, over decades, including deliberate targeting of civilians and civilian infrastructure. The Israeli government is cutting electricity, uh, food, fuel. It's, it's, it's threatening to attack humanitarian convoys. These are clear war crimes. These are, uh, you know, attacks on the civilian population. It's collective punishment. Uh, we're really seeing abuses and violations on an unprecedented scale. Of course, Gaza has been under closure before. We've seen unlawful attacks, but we're seeing threats on a scale that just simply haven't been seen uh, in years, if not longer. And it's horrifying and it's urgent that the world, including um, uh, countries like South Africa, Africa and throughout the African continent are quite clear on what's needed. We need to understand the larger picture here. Palestinians live a reality of apartheid. They've been living in Gaza under a 16-year closure policy. There have been unlawful attacks by Palestinian armed groups, by Israeli authorities for decades. There needs to be an end to this impunity. We need to call a spade a spade, identifying the reality of apartheid and take steps to end complicity in these crimes. Will there be any real chance, though, of such steps being taken? Because one of the things that the Palestinians have been saying is that in the condemnation of the actions by Hamas, even by Palestinians who themselves have said that Hamas as an armed group does not speak or represent all of them, there has been, they say, especially in the West, an attempt to basically ignore the context of this violence because what happened on Saturday morning and what we are now seeing in the Gaza Strip and we're hearing now also spreading into the border between Israel and Lebanon has a historic context. Has that been lost? I, I think it's been lost. Look, acknowledging that context does not justify the unspeakable crimes and atrocities committed by Palestinian armed groups. Those have no justification. But the bloodshed did not begin on October 7th. We're talking about decades-long state-sanctioned movement restrictions, repression, unlawful attacks. The reality is the population in Gaza has been caged in an open-air prison, 2.2 million people in a narrow strip of land. Uh, in 2023, ignored from the context and many of the discussions, we've seen more Palestinians killed in the West Bank by Israeli forces than in any year since the UN began systematically tracking fatalities. There are currently more Palestinians being held in administrative detention which is detention without trial or charge, than in more than 30 years. So clearly there is a larger picture, and we're here precisely because for too long the international community failed to, you know, center human rights. It hid behind the myth of a peace process, which hasn't, there hasn't been one for more than a decade, and that's been a fig leaf for the ugly reality. Now, yes, these, some of these asks are not things that are going to happen tomorrow, but what's immediately needed is quite clear. Humanity Humanitarian aid must be allowed in. There must be pressure to allow, you know, Israel to allow in food, electricity. There must.
must be a call for all parties to adhere to international law to ensure that attacks do not indiscriminately attack, do not attack civilians. There must be a call uh, for accountability for unlawful attacks. These are quite basic steps that we call for as Human Rights Watch around the world. They must be taken immediately. History does not suggest, though, that there'll be any real kind of accountability, does it, Omar? But also, when you look at the pictures that we're seeing, especially in the last 24 hours or so, uh, parents in the Gaza Strip carrying the lifeless bodies of their children. Israeli media today at a site reporting where they say that bodies of people, including children, were found, some of them beheaded, yet the people responsible for previous atrocities in this region, especially at the leadership of organizations such as Hamas, or even those who ordered airstrikes by the IDF in Israel, have not faced any sort of prosecution, really. Absolutely. Let, let me be clear. Look, there's a lot of reports coming out. Information is coming at a fast speed. It all needs to be verified, but we don't need to verify to know that civilians have been caught in the crosshairs, that Hamas deliberately killed hundreds of Israeli uh, civilians, dragged some of them in, including women and children, as hostages. That's unspeakable horror. It's simply unjustifiable. It's also very clear that Israel has been raining hell on the Gaza Strip, including wiping off residential buildings, killing people. There needs to be accountability. As you noted, we're here because of decades of endemic impunity. Mm -hmm. But unlike other parts of the world, we have a situation here where the International Criminal Court does have a formal investigation of serious crimes committed in Palestine. That investigation has not moved forward in the last couple of years. It's urgent that the prosecutor accelerate that investigation. It's critical that states outline the need for accountability, that they support international mechanisms, including uh, the commission of inquiry that's been established by the UN Human Rights Council. These are a must because ultimately, unless we deal with and ensure accountability for unlawful attacks, they're only bound to repeat mm -hmm. themselves. The same people, whether they be Israeli government officials or Hamas leaders that have previously commit, you know, um, committed what you know apparent war crimes, okay. are the ones calling the shots and doing the same. Lastly, then Omar, let me get your thoughts on the Israelis basically blocking off supplies of fuel. Um, electricity as well as water going into the Gaza Strip. We're now hearing some calls for the establishment of a corridor so that the civilians aren't effectively punished for the atrocities committed by Hamas since Saturday. Do you think that'll be successful at this point, given how tense the situation actually is? It needs to be successful. Starvation is a matter of war, withholding electricity, um, food from the civilian population are are war crimes. Uh, there must be an effort to ensure that humanitarian support gets to Gaza. I can't underscore today the reality that people in Gaza have almost no electricity. Hospitals are at capacity, overwhelmed. Uh, electricity and uh, beyond that, internet has been cut in many parts of the country. Clean water is difficult to find. That is a recipe that's not sustainable. We're going to have, and beyond those being killed by active hot conflict by, by airstrikes. This will take a toll. You have more, nearly 200,000, according to the UN, displaced. There needs to be an immediate effort to address the urgent humanitarian needs on the ground. That is, has to be priority one, even if it takes us a bit longer to actually end the underlying um, airstrikes. Omar Shakir from Human Rights Watch, good to speak to you. Thank you for your time.